All right, so picking up our study in the book of Revelation, chapter 9. I am going to try to do these recordings a little bit um, more closer together now that my semester is over and I will have a little bit more time in the summer uh, towards the end of the spring and beginning of the summer and so forth to do these things. Uh, so I am reading from the New King James Version and I will pick it up at verse 1. Then the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man in those days men will seek death and will not find it they will desire to die and death will flee from them the shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle on their heads were crowns of something like gold and their faces were like the faces of men they had hair like women's hair and their teeth were like lion's teeth and they had breastplates like breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle they had tails like scorpions and there were strings or stings in their tails their power was to hurt men five months and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. One woe is past, but hold still two more woes are coming after these things. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth, blue, and sulfur yellow, and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone, which came out of their mouths, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents having heads, and with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries, or their sexual immorality, or their thefts. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for this word. I am excited as I finish reading verse 21, the 21 verses of chapter 9. Wow, 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God for th and Holy Spirit for this word. So much wisdom in just this one chapter. So much wisdom in this whole book, Lord. In this whole book, anyone who he has hear ears to hear, anyone who hears the words of this prophecy, Lord, will be blessed as, you, as it states in um, the beginning of this book. Oh, Lord give us wisdom here I saw so much here Lord thank you I just want to thank you for this word and I want you to, I, I want um, to ask that you bless anyone that's listening to this uh, recording Lord uh, that you bless them with their hearts desires Lord that you bring their desires at the center at the core of your will Lord that they first desire to worship and honor you Lord that they delight in you, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you so much for being so faithful with me all these years. I asked for more faith. I knew, I knew what I lacked, Lord. I don't know if it was guilt, shame, or conviction, all three, all of the above, Lord, but I knew that I needed more faith, Lord. I, I've not been the same as um, the type of, you know, when there's a convert that hasn't served you all their lives and one day they turn around from their wicked ways, Lord, and they start serving you and they have this crazy zeal for you. My faith started as a child. And although I see that as a blessing, but at the same time, now I understand. I understand why it felt so stagnant, Lord. But you stayed faithful with me. I want to thank you for that, Lord. And I do want to thank you for, for preserving my life, Lord. For preserving um, me from doing more wicked things than I could have done at a young age, Lord. For blessing me with parents that feared you, Lord. In their own way, they fear you. For my mother, Lord, who has a child... I ask, how can I get to heaven? How can I get to heaven, Lord? I asked the nuns when I was going to the Catholic Church, how can I get to heaven? And they said, rightfully they said, at least in this part, all I needed to do was believe in Jesus. And of course you have the pastors that are out there that say, that belief that even the demons believe and so forth well yeah even the demons worship you Lord but do they love you that's the question and I think I know the answer to that I, I remember um, the story of, of the demons the legion of demons that that you uh, that you rebuked the man that was far away in the far away land and one of the gospels I don't know if it's a gospel of Luke but one of the gospels it said that that, that the, the legion came to worship you and that's scary because I see in the word of God Lord in your word of how you how you have said that those who say Lord Lord and who have cast out demons in your name and who have prophesied in your name, Lord, such those you may still say to them, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness, I never knew you. And Lord, I know not a shadow of a doubt that I'm not going to be one of those, Lord. And I know that um, the path is narrow and straight. But you make it so easy for us, Lord. It's, it's not as hard as we think it is. We just need to have faith in you and love you. And it's like the love comes after the faith. You honor the faith and you bless it. And that becomes fruitful. And we start to love and adore you over time. I want to thank you for being faithful with me, Lord in that respect. I want to thank you for being faithful as 
My faith was stagnant for so many years and so many years I wondered why am I going through this trial but thank God I did. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Father God. Thank you. Thank you for every single trial that I've been through. It had its purpose. If it had not been for those trials I would not have the faith that I have today. Thank you for that Lord. And um I just want you, I, I really want you to bless anyone that's uh, listening to this recording, Lord, and may your will be done now and forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so what I am getting from um, this, it's a few points, not very long. Um, how the demons and the enemy has an armor. Not the armor of God. It's a wicked armor. But if you if you read the passages here, um, it refers to them having a breastplate, and we and we read in the book of uh, in, in Ephesians that uh, there's an armor of God, and uh, the breastplate is actually the breastplate of righteousness. Wow! And this is like their breastplate obviously isn't going to be of righteousness, so they're using opposite weapons from us are using maybe similar materials but opposite weapons I think it's very interesting that they were not given the authority to mess with grass or greens and it just makes me think of the movement I'm not against um, saving the planet and whatnot but if we're gonna save the planet we're not gonna do that at the expense of the children of God at the expense of tormenting the minds and hearts and spirits and souls of individuals that love the Lord and we see that today we see how we're we're falling away we're getting closer to this end we are in the last days we are most definitely in the last days and um, what good is looked at as evil and evil is looked at as good and uh, one of the interesting things I saw from this passage was that on verse 20 um, but the rest of mankind were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. So those who were not killed did not repent. So it's that's very interesting. But also, um, you know, the power was to hurt them, but um, it says their power was to hurt men for five months. And they had as king over them and so forth and so um, people will want to die and they're not going to be able to die and of course the way the words are written here I mean this is a I don't know 2,000 years ago or so they're gonna want to die but they're not gonna die makes me think of suicide we that's the word that we use now is suicide um, but they're not gonna be able to even commit suicide Wow and so um, I leave you with this um, I pray that this blesses you and um, that you just stay in the Word of God because the Word of God saves in Jesus name I love you guys and I pray that you all have a wonderful day in Jesus name praise God for his word Amen.